In this video, we will take a look at what exactly Denis Siplinkov said about Devon and more importantly about his current shape and future plans in the post-match speech at East vs West 10. Then we'll discuss some of the translation problems that everyone has been discussing about arm wrestling, especially when it involves Russian arm wrestlers. Then we'll take a look at East vs West top 10 rankings in the super heavyweight division. Devon is obviously leading, but where is Denis Siplenkov in the eyes of Engin Terzi and the arm wrestling community? Alex Kordecha vs Bacho Saginashvili. Alex has returned, but is he going to compete? That's the next question. Then I'll address what Neil Pickup said about me. My response will be towards the end of this video. So please make sure you watch it till the end, like the video and subscribe. This is Denis Siplenkov's post-match speech. I'm going to keep on and to try to reach my peak shape. About Devon, as I said, he's strong and also had lots of great wins recently. I understood his superior shape, so it was psychologically hard for me as I was the one trying to catch up. I was not prepared for such Larratt's shape. A year ago, when I was going to return, his shape was different. As I said, I was worried as his shape was better than mine. So maybe Dennis knew all along that he had very few chances of winning this match. Now I'm going to take a two weeks break and together with organizers, we will think of something new for me. I will keep on training. And in that True Power interview as well, he said about four or five different times that he will continue training. This is the most positive sign that we all wanted to see. Dennis Siplenkov's story is not over yet and we are probably going to see many matches from him in the future and he will return in a better shape in which he showed up against Devon. And now let's take a look at these posts about the translation. Translator of Dennis Siplenkov sucks. East vs West needs professionally hired translators. I do kind of agree with this, but at the same time, translation is a very difficult job. Just because you can speak the language, it doesn't mean you can remember everything that the athlete just said. And that's where the problem lies. I think the athletes and the translators could prepare a strategy where they speak something like, on the match day, when I beat you so bad, you will regret it. And the speaker, the athlete takes a pause and then the translator translates that part. So that can be done strategically, but as long as these arm wrestlers keep on speaking like 10 different sentences and then we expect someone who doesn't know English himself that well, we expect that guy to translate it perfectly, never going to happen. The translation is almost a thankless job unless you are Pavlo Darbedyanev. And maybe these translators should also use Google Translate. So as the arm wrestler is speaking, Google Translate is going to catch that. You may not need to read that out, the translation version of that, but at least you will have a reference as to what that person actually said. And that should be done and I think it will be done in the future if enough people suggest that idea. And then this post about some apparent beef between Evgeny Prudnik and Denis Siplenkov because of Russia and Ukraine issues. Evgeny Prudnik posted a video after Siplenkov lost, titling as Chiplenkov, whatever that means. So maybe that match can happen after this beef between these countries is solved because Engin is not going to set it until that happens first. And now let's talk about the East versus West rankings. Devon Lert is at the top, then we have Hermes Gasparini, then Jerry Cadret. Gennady Kukwinia may be feeling weird sitting at number four because he may think that he deserves that spot if he looks at Hermes and Jerry, both of them beat him, but he may get slightly excited after seeing Devon at number one because he did beat Devon in an absolute war. After that, we have Georgi Svetkov, then Denis Siplenkov at number six. I read a comment saying that Denis has not done anything more than Sasho Andreev. And in fact, if we take a look at it, in the first round, Sasho Andreev beat John easier than Denis Siplenkov. Yes, this was a lighter version of uh, John that was facing Sasho, but I don't think that's how it works. Yes, on paper, it looks exactly the same. Both defeated John Brzezink and nothing else. But obviously, man, let's be honest. Denis Siplenkov cannot be compared to Sasho. If we go down the list, I think Denis can beat Morozov. I don't think he can beat Vitaly Lalitin, but I think he can beat Rivaz and also Georgi Zaranov. We can say the same about Zaur Pezulayev as well. Zaur could have featured on this list because he competed only once and he lost that match. That's why he's not there, but he can beat Zaranov. I think he beats Rivaz as well. He has beaten Vitaly twice and lost to him only once in last one and a half year. Maybe he cracks Morozov as well, so he can also feature on this page. There was this one video on Trent's React YouTube channel and it got like 630,000 views before it got taken down. It was posted after Engin Terzi's post on his own YouTube channel and still it got more views. I went to the page to look at some of the comments against the video, why are you stealing Engin's video? And surprisingly, there were none. 
I was surprised. Maybe that guy removed all of those comments or maybe nobody is bothered. Like no one was talking about it. I think we need to get behind the promoters in these aspects. So this is clearly a stolen footage. If you ever see something like that in the future, please comment as much as possible. So at least the new viewers, they know what's up. They know that it is not his content and they go to Angin Terzi's page. Arm wrestling fans have been waiting for Alex Kordecha's return for more than a year now. And they simply do not get any answer from Kordecha whatsoever. I interviewed Alex about nine or 10 months ago and he told me that be prepared. He is going to make a comeback and he is going to be stronger than ever. But till now, we have not seen anything from him. He was seen putting a beating on young Bacho Saganashvili. Man, the after pull or the practice pull market, especially when the cameras are out, is very serious here. And people just simply cannot afford to look weak. And I don't blame them for that at all. And I think it's kind of important as well. People were saying, why didn't you let Bacho get in his comfortable hook position and see if you can hold him there? Well, maybe that's not his training style. He doesn't want to train defense. He's not a top level defensive arm wrestler. He only needs to practice offense. And speaking of practice pulls, let's talk about the Neil pickup issue now. I remember I was watching his show the other day. I tuned into it for a moment while I was in the car. And one of the things he said on there was, top arm wrestlers will tell you that the practice table doesn't matter, but we should ignore them. So there it is. You guys heard it. What Neil Pickup had to say about me. Did I say that? Of course I did. Was that the only thing that I said? Of course not. Let's listen to what I actually had to say. The elite arm wrestlers will keep on telling you that practice pulls don't matter, but we shouldn't listen to them. We should just watch what they're doing. So now you guys tell me, since when did it change from being a good advice to a bad advice if you're telling someone to not just follow someone else's words, but to actually pay close attention to what they're doing. Watch their actions, follow their actions, and not just their words. When did it change from good to bad? And why didn't Neil notify me about that? I think Neil believes that I have a very narrow perspective about practice pulls, that I think that if this guy is beating this guy in practice pulls, it is going to be the same result in actual matches as well. I never said that, except for some exceptional cases when both the arm wrestlers were fresh and the strength gap was that big that the other person was getting stonewalled by this guy. And then I said maybe if that match happens in like five, six months, it's not enough time to overcome that much strength gap. I never believed or never said that practice pulls means equal to real matches and they somehow mean the same thing. I actually have a very wild field of view about these practice pulls and I'll give you some examples. So tell that to Devon Neal that practice pulls don't matter when he was hiding the Evgeny Prudnik practice pull like it was one of the most precious belongings that he ever had in his life. If it is not important, then you will not hide it from people. It's just as simple as that. Ask Devon, and I'm talking to Neil, not you guys. Ask Devon, why didn't he show the Alex Kordecha right-handed practice pull? Ask him or ask Kordecha about that. Why haven't they shared that pull? And the Evgeny Prudnik practice pull, that was one of the most hyped practice pulls ever. And it wasn't even shown until the match was already over. So isn't that quite surprising that we are hiding something which doesn't matter? It's like, it's some trash that is laying outside of my house. It doesn't matter, but someday I'm going to get it inside my house and put it inside a locker and not let anyone touch it or see it, but it doesn't matter. You never hide stuff, you never protect stuff that doesn't matter. So tell that to Denis Siplenkov, who was saying that he's not going to practice pull at an East versus West event, no after pulling because he's not in peak shape. He's not that strong. Tell that to Dennis that these pulls don't matter. You shouldn't be bothered about them. I'm not saying that it means something when we compare it to actual match, but practice pulls can sometimes build athletes up. It can hype them up. It can give them career opportunities, many matches. They can build careers and they can sometimes crash careers as well. So if that many things are happening around practice pulls, how can you say they don't matter? They obviously do. Tell that to Hermes Gasperini, whose career got more hyped up just after pinning Vitaly Lalatin once on the practice table compared to his five to seven to eight years of terrorizing his, his own weight categories. Tell that to Hermes. It clearly matters. 
Tell that to Levan Saginashvili, who is willing to unretire on the left arm only for one match against Devon Lerett, just because Devon said that if he was fresh in that practice pool in USA, then the result could have been different. He took it that personally that he's unretiring from the sport, unretiring from the left handed arm wrestling just to beat Devon and show that practice pool showed the actual result which is going to be happening on the match day as well. Tell that to Levan that it doesn't matter. Tell that to yourself. Why were you hiding the Georgi Svetkov and Devon practice pull on the right arm? And don't tell me that the king of the table organizers did not see that practice pull and then they booked that match. Come on, Neil. You know 100 different examples like that, way more than I do. So how can you say they don't matter? You can say that they don't actually matter about the result being exact same as practice pulls, but around that there are 100 dif different things which are sometimes even more important than the actual result. They can build careers and they are very important. Schoolboy built a million dollar YouTube channel just based off street practice pulls. Tell that guy that practice pulls don't matter. Tell him, if it can build your career, how can you say that it doesn't matter? It obviously matters and that's why these guys are criticized for not showing the footages where they're losing. And I'm like, go do it, buddy. It, it's your right. These do matter. That's why you're hiding them. And tell that to Rahul Panekar. If Rahul never beat Larry Wheels in that practice super match, would you have invited him to arm wars? So Neil is clearly not following whatever he's himself saying. And practice pulls do matter. So once again, Neil, it is true here. Practice pulls do matter. Arm wrestlers, elite arm wrestlers, just like yourself, will tell you that they don't, but they do. Don't listen to them. And I'll have to be careful from now on because if I say that I killed someone and then I say after a pause in my dream, Neil is going to go on his podcast next day and he's going to say that Pradeep was saying that he killed someone and people will be like, did he really say that? And he'll be like, yeah, mate, he did. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe.